This is Dr. Jennifer Levine. I am a board certified facial plastic surgeon in Manhattan and today we're going to go over facelifts and why this might be the right procedure for you. So for me, the most important thing that kind of determines how old a person looks is a determination that other people make from about 10 feet away. So we kind of decide what decade people are in from the shape of their face. So maybe in our teens and 20s and even 30s, we're oval or heart shaped. Uh, and as we get older, our face becomes more rectangular. And this rectangularization of the face actually makes us look older. So the idea of a facelift is to restore a more oval contour and where we have some narrowness and definition around the jawline and more openness and more volume toward the upper part of the face. So instead of being a rectangle, we're going more to a uh, V-like effect. So what we need to do is we always need to remember that we never want to look plastic. And a youthful face is one that has soft definition. So there's nothing tight or pulled or unnatural to a youthful face. So when we do a facelift, we always want to keep this in mind. So what happens as we get older, if we look at this picture here, is we have a loss of definition along the jawline and some laxity to the neck. We have a descent of the cheek and more of a, uh, there becomes a, a, a clear delineation between the eye and the cheek and that's much lower than when we are younger. So these are all things that we want to look at when we're looking at someone's face and maybe in addition to doing a facelift, you may need to do other procedures to get your whole face to be rejuvenated. So what we also want to remember is that a facelift is not just about fixing the skin. We want to correct the deeper layers of tissue. So there is a layer of connective tissue that involves the muscles of facial expression, the muscles that move the face. This is called the SMAS, submuscular aponeurotic system. And this layer attenuates or kind of loosens as we get older. The other thing that's important to understand is that this layer attaches to the bone of the facial skeleton with ligaments like we have also in other parts of the body. And sometimes we also need to release these ligaments in order to restore that deeper layer to the natural position. So a question that I'm often asked is where are the incisions for a facelift? So there's a variety of different types of facelifts depending on the issue that you have and how much of a change that we need to have. So one of the incisions that most people usually need is a submental incision. That's an incision that goes under your chin. It's very well hidden. This allows us to do work to the central area of the neck, uh, particularly to the middle part of the muscle here that's called the platysma. So often you'll see that there are two cords in your neck that might be visible uh, and we want to get rid of that. So often that means that in addition to suctioning out some of the fat, we actually have to sew the bands of the muscle together so it's nice and smooth. So that's one part of the incision. The other part of the incision is an incision that's going to be hidden in this temporal tuft of hair. It's going to fall into a natural crease here. It's then going to go behind the tragus or this little part of the earlobe and then back into the crease. And this will allow us to reposition the platysma muscle as it attaches in the lower part of the face and also to reposition the cheek. So you can do this little test yourself. If pulling upward this way on your face fully corrects your neck, then that's really, you don't need more of an incision, but if you see that you actually need to pull back on your neck to get it to be smooth, that gives you a good idea that you might need to have a little bit more of an incision. In that case, the incision is going to go up, back, and around the ear, and then it will be hidden in the occipital or the back of the hairline. So it's still going to allow you to wear your hair up in a ponytail if that's what you would choose to do, but we want the neck to be smooth and not have an unnatural pull, so that would necessitate a posterior extent of the incision. The most important part 
of the incisions is that they're well placed so that they heal up well and they don't change the position of the hairline and they fall into natural creases in the face. So often people ask me, how long do I really need to recover from a facelift? So I would say the general rule of thumb is about 10 days. You're gonna have a big dressing on your head overnight. You're gonna see me the next day and I'm gonna take that dressing down. And for the first 48 hours, you're going to have to stay at home with some ice. And it's usually good to have someone help you at this time because it's not good to have a lot of head turning or bending down. This way you keep nice and calm and you don't raise your blood pressure and you don't do a lot of motion and that's going to increase the swelling. You will have some stitches that come out around six days and some that will come out at around nine days. So I think 10 days is a good rule of thumb to give yourself.